Hey everyone, welcome back to the Warrior Rundown for the week of January 11th. I'm Michael Gage, joined with Alex Conte and Matt Gagan. And we're going to start off with uh, Merrimack men's basketball. So Merrimack men's basketball started off with a big overtime victory against Sacred Heart. Um, what do you guys have to say about that? Uh, it was a great game. I mean, I didn't have a chance to watch it. I was um, on vacation, but um, I mean, it's a great game for the first basketball games that I've been a part of Merrimack community for. Tyler Thomas had like, what, 36 points? Um, and they won in overtime, which is even better. So starting the season off, I mean, even they just splitting the series, Sacred Heart is, um, I've heard they're like, like a decent basketball program, right? And mm -hmm. in their second year of D1 to prove that they're not just like a, um, What's the word I'm thinking of? Um, beginner's luck program. Um, I think it's a good start for them for sure. Yeah, I agree. It was a good way to start the season with a win against Sacred Heart. Um, I've actually seen Tyler Thomas play like before this season because he lives in my home state of Connecticut. So, and the dude is just unstoppable and he's really good. But, and I'm glad that Merrimack was able to. Um, to win the first time, but unfortunately lost, but it's okay. We won in overtime and uh, we have five players in double digits, which, which was really good. And we put up uh, 42 points in the second half. And then we put up 16 in overtime, which was really good. Good way to start. And then we're playing Mount St. Mary's the, tonight, the 14th. Um, and we're one and one against uh, Mount St. Mary's. And our last win against them was, January 9th of last year. So that'll be a good matchup. So tonight, the 14th, and tomorrow, the 15th, we got Mount St. Mary's. All right. And so now we're going to move on to the NHL scene. We're going to start with uh, the Bruins are back. So tonight versus the uh, New Jersey Devils. Uh, what do you guys think about that? I know Matt's excited. I can see him, I'm see him ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I'm pumped. Look at that. Um, Obviously, you know, I'm kind of nervous just because it's a it's a different looking team than last year or two years ago. And I mean, I, I'm excited, though, because I think that even with Chara and Krug leaving, that'll give um, some younger players an opportunity to really step up. I mean, McAvoy's already been a leader and he's what, like 24 or something like that. So I think that um, I do think it'll be a rough start to the season for them, especially I don't think Pashanak or Marshawn are back yet. Um, and I think they still have a couple weeks um, at the least until they're back. But I think it'll, I think it'll be a fun season. I'm pumped. Yeah, this season is going to be good for the at least the Bruins because uh, they're in a good conference. Like they totally realigned the conferences. Like they got some good teams, but they're at the top with um, with with like at least Washington and um, Philadelphia. And um, even though they lost some of their big guys like Chara and Krug, like they're going to uh, put up some big numbers this year in the, in the Eastern Conference or, or the Eastern Division. Um, and they're, they're, still a good, they're still a good team, even though they, they've been through a lot of these past couple of years, like, you know, the Stanley Cup final and early exit in the, um, in the playoffs last year. But they'll make a good run this year, and it'll be good to see the Bruins play. All right. And now we're going to move on to the, uh, the Celtics have been battling COVID issues. Uh, and one thing we wanted to mention or that we you know, thought when we were discussing earlier is that the 76ers also had COVID issues, but were still able to find a way to play their game. And I know I'm not really a Celtics fan, but I know a lot of Celtics fans are upset that the, you know, the Celtics were not granted that same you know, privilege to continue to play a game. What do you guys have to say? I don't, I don't know. I don't really understand why they're upset about that. Like, I know that Tatum tested positive. Brown can't play either. Those are their two top players. Um, they have, what, like six or seven players that can't play right now? I mean, there's a lot of players that aren't, that are unable to play. So, I mean, they could try to forge a team like the uh, 76ers did, but I don't know how well those games would go. I don't think they're like forfeiting these games, are they? I don't know. I mean, I'm actually asking. I, I think they're rescheduled to a, a later date. Right. So they're rescheduled. Yeah. So in my opinion, I mean, they're getting like the 76ers, in my opinion, were kind of screwed. Like they had all of their players out and they could, I mean, I don't know if they won those games. I can't imagine they did, but I just, I think it'd be a lot harder for the Celtics to win these games. And it looks like they're kind of getting almost a free pass 
in my opinion. Yeah, the COVID situation has been crazy in the uh, NBA. Um, like, cause these guys are eager to get back on the court. So they're, they're trying to get in as many games as they can. Cause a lot of other teams have played games already. And like Celtics are, they haven't been on the court that much. Like, like COVID is tough, but you know, these guys are getting paid millions of dollars to play basketball and they, they just want to get on the court. Even if it, um, if, even if it means doing what the 76ers did, like having a guy on the bench, that's not going to play, but at least you, you're still able to play the game. So to these guys, it's just it's all about getting back on the court and just doing whatever it takes to to play the game they love that they get paid to do. So, all right, and another thing in the NBA we wanted to talk about, I believe Matt requested to take the head on this next segment is uh, James Harden going to the Brooklyn Nets. So Matt, I won't say anymore. What do you what do you think about that? A lot of people are hyping this up, right? And I'm just gonna say, like, listen, I've told this before. I'm not a huge basketball fan, but I follow it. Um, like I follow any sport, right? I think that, first of all, I think the super team stuff in the NBA is outlandish. I don't think that that should, I, mean, I think that the amount of times that this happens is ridiculous. But I will say um, a lot of people are giving the title to the Nets right now. And I would say, I don't even know if they're going to make it past the Eastern Conference finals. And that's bold. That's bold, right? But Kyrie left Cleveland to be the number one guy. He's now the number three guy. That's not going to make him happy. Durant wasn't really a leader on the Warriors. As much as he was like a point scorer, he wasn't like a leader, in my opinion. It was still Steph and Clay. And Harden, they're all attitudes. I don't know. I feel like if there's anyone that could screw it up, it'd be them. But who knows? I mean, I guess we'll see. I just – I. I think that they kind of gave up way too much for a player that might only be there for a year. I mean, the Rockets ended up with like Oladipo and what, like five first round picks or something? And pick swaps too. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, but another thing is, I don't really think that Harden or Kyrie's heart is really in the game of basketball. And I don't, I really, it doesn't look, it doesn't look to me like they want to play basketball they have, it seems like they have other interests like we want to be celebrities not basketball players. yeah yeah i agree yeah uh, and oh sorry no no you go you go. so yeah it seems like to me like um the nets are getting a lot of uh like selfish players like Kyrie and and james harden like james harden's carried the rockets for a long time i'm sure he wants to change but um, like Kyrie's been like, he's a good player and he knows it, but it just seems like wherever he goes, like he's not a cancer. He's just, he has a bad attitude and like, he's in it for himself. Like same with James Harden, but like you guys said, like, and I saw it like Stephen A. Smith said it the other day, like, I don't even like, he's like, Kyrie should probably retire because it seems like he's in it for himself. And he's in it, like, he just, they, do, they just don't seem like they want to play basketball anymore. Like they're in it for themselves. Like James Harden's out doing other things, like instead of like worrying about basketball. And like, that's just not every NBA player is like this, but like a lot of guys are in it for themselves now. Mm-hmm. Like that's just the way the game is like nowadays, but it's just, it's better for them. And for, instead of putting everybody through all this trouble, like it's just better for themselves and for the NBA, for their teams they're on. All right, so now we're going to switch gears to the college uh, football scene. Sadly, I, I didn't – don't really – not too happy about this next topic, but uh, we're going to talk about Alabama and Nick Saban – and Nick Saban winning his seventh national title. Uh, they blew out Ohio State, quite frankly. Uh, we still got to still gotta fly the colors, though. Uh, but I don't know. Devontae Smith was unstoppable. I, I, he was ridiculous. He showed why he was the Heisman winner. Alabama proved once again that, you know, they, they can be unstoppable a majority of the time. So what do you guys think about that? I mean, I, I'm not really like a huge Alabama fan just cause like, I like Clemson, but oh, I, God. I know. I mean, but I, I respect Saban because he's like the Belichick of college football. It's unreal. I mean, I, I will say, I think he has it easier solely because like, he's built his program so that he can recruit like every five-star recruit that 
there ever existed. But I mean, 52-24 is like ridiculous, right? I mean, in Ohio State lost a running back, right? I forget yeah. who that was. Trey Sermon. Yeah, they lost him like the first drive or something. So that was tough. But I mean, Devontae Smith showed why he should go top 10. And Mac Jones showed that he's still a solid quarterback. I mean, he, I think if Devontae Smith wasn't there, he might have won the Heisman. But. Oh, did you see quickly? Did you see the physique comparison of uh, Mac Jones and Tom Brady? That that shocked me. I was like, oh my God. Like, and Brady's looking, he's looking better now with that whole TV 12 thing. But God, when they were both, when he was drafted and then Mac Jones now is like, ugh. I mean, my kind of thing with Mac Jones is like we really let that guy beat us, you know, <laughs> like we let that guy put up like five touchdowns. Points, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, yeah, yeah. The, oh, sorry, but um, Alabama just they pump out like really good players all the time. Like that's just going to be like their reputation is that they they bring in like these top names and like and then they end up going to the NFL most of the time. So. Like there's a lot of other schools like that, but like, like that, like this national championship, like that just happened was like, it was just like the, the stamp on the on the envelope. Like, and like a lot of these top names, like you know, like Mac Jones and like Devontae Smith, they're like really good. Like Devontae Smith was a Heisman Trophy winner, and like and he's probably gonna, he's definitely going to the NFL. So like, it, like Ohio State is good, but Alabama is just better. Like they've been better for a long time. So it's just good to see those guys. It's to see those good teams just play, but Alabama's just with that. Mike. <laughs> you just called out your Buckeyes. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, it's one of the things I just don't like. I just don't. I'm not an Alabama fan. I'm not a Clemson fan at all. Yeah. But anyway, because they're quote, powerhouses, they're dynasties. Like, I mean, you can't say Ohio State's not. No, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, I'm just saying. All right, all right, all right. We're good. We're good. <laughs> College then, football's kind of like that, though. That's the thing. Yeah. And then quickly, to build off what Alex said, uh, there's going to be – Alabama is set to have 10 players taken in the first round of the NFL draft, which would break the record, I believe, that's set by Ohio State, which would be another blow to Ohio State in the same season. But anyway, I'm, I don't want to talk about a third this. of the first round is going is going to yeah, happen. Like, <laughs> that's, ridi- that's ridiculous. That's crazy. And then now we get into perhaps uh, the my favorite part of this my favorite part of the show. I get to talk about the Cleveland Browns. So first off, I'd like to say that the Browns were absolutely magnificent against the Steelers in the first quarter, twenty eight nothing after the first quarter. Second quarter, they did okay. And then what it seems to happen every game is the Browns think, oh, we got this one in the bag. We we can still – we can start – we don't have to make any second-half adjustments. And then the Steelers came roaring back. But, you know, Big Ben had, I believe, four, uh, four interceptions and a fumble, something like that. There's a lot of turnovers by the Steelers. And I don't know, I'm just really happy. I'm really excited to be here for the first time in the divisional round as a fan. Uh, I've never watched Brown's playoff game until until uh, last week. I'm excited to get, to get to watch another one. So what do you guys have to say? Maybe not maybe not just the Browns, but why don't we talk divisional divisional round too? Um, all right, so first of all, I was rooting for the Browns like that entire game, just because the Steelers were so cocky that whole season and they had no right to. Like they were undefeated against like, chumps first of all that's that's it that's all i have to say about that um divisional round will be good i hope that brady can beat breeze for the first time this season um who are the packers playing packers are playing rams. rams the rams okay i think packers should take that but i guess we'll see i mean it's also in lambo in freezing cold weather yeah so i would with jared goff with a broken thumb still right yeah and then um, Titans lost. That kind of sucked. I was kind of hoping that Derrick Henry would show people why he was the rushing leader this year, but he didn't really do a whole lot. No. Um, yeah, I mean, I was I was happy for the – I think the Bill – I think, honestly, I still think it will be Bill's Chiefs in the NFC Championship. But 
but I don't. I'm not counting it out for the Browns yet. Like I will say, the Browns have a chance. I would, I would hope so. Oh. Yeah, the Browns are going to put up a good fight. I would say, like they might not. Sorry, like, but I don't. The Browns might not win, but they're going to put up a good fight against the Chiefs because they they showed why they can hang with the Steelers and this like Matt said, like the Steelers play like some like average teams and like the Steelers are okay, but they're not as good as like everybody like said they were, but there's a lot of good games coming up this weekend. Like it'll be good to see like Brady versus breeze and like the Packers will definitely beat the Rams. Cause like the Seahawks, um, like they're good, but like sometimes they have their moments where they're not like, for example, when the, when they lost the giants with Colt McCoy, mm. <laughs> but Definitely a lot of good games this weekend. Like it'll be good to see Lamar Jackson like moving on further in the playoffs and like and like especially like facing off against Josh Allen and the Bills. Like there are a lot of good games coming up, so it'll be an exciting weekend of football for sure. I would like to see uh, a Browns Ravens rematch in the AFC Championship game. That's what I, that's what I'm rooting for. But I know that Matt and I's uh, friend, who's a huge Bills fan, will probably not be rooting for that outcome, but. I don't think that'll happen either. I think the Bill, if the Bills could beat the Colts, and they barely beat the Colts, but they still beat them, I think that just having that win now is gonna like set off something where Diggs and Allen will go off and this next week. Oh, it'll be exciting to see for sure. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna move into the after show, and I would like to start off the after show by talking about. Uh, Ohio State quarterback Justin Fields is slated to go to the New England Patriots, which a lot of my friends have given me a hard time about this. They're like, oh, you have to be a Patriots fan now. I'm like, no, I do not. I can root for Justin Fields to be a good, have a good career. But I don't know. It's just a, it's a tough situation for me. I hope any other team in the NFL picks up Justin Fields. But I guess we'll have to wait and find out on that one. I don't know. I would, I would love for him to go to the Pats. But I don't know if they're – I don't know. And maybe this is just – I've never seen the Patriots have a pick this high, like, in my life, I don't think. So yeah. I don't know what they're going to do with it. I just – I mean, Belichick picked a D2 safety with his first rounder last year. And I don't know if I see him keeping this pick for a quarterback instead of, like – maybe make a trade package for like Deshaun Watson or Matt Stafford or something like that. But mm. I mean, even Justin Fields, he was definitely solid against Clemson. So I would love to see that. I mean, I'm pretty open right now. <laughs> yeah, me too. Like the, the draft is so, so like unpredictable, but like it would be nice to see Justin Fields go to like the Patriots, but I feel like he's too good to go that late into the draft. Like, I feel like another team's gonna want to pick him up. Like that doesn't have like a like a like a solid quarterback. They're and he's really good. So like he's probably gonna go like at least like the top ten. Like the Patriots are they're a good team, but I I just feel like they're not gonna they're not gonna go for Fields. Mm, well, who okay? Who would need a quarterback? Uh, Lions might take him. Yeah, the Lions might. I don't think that. Like Jags and Jets will probably both take quarterbacks, but I don't think Fields would be number two. Do you? I have, I have no idea. I just don't want him to go to the Patriots. Okay. Yeah. I, mean, I would say I would, I think the Jets. I don't know. I don't know if they're in on Sam Donald or not, but I, know, I guess we'll have to. I guess we'll find out soon enough. Yeah. All right. Uh, quickly, I would think a good quarterback possibly for the Patriots would be, as Matt as Matt said earlier, Deshaun Watson. I would like to see Matt Stafford only because he has been tortured by having a long career with the Lions. His talent's been, to be fr- to be honest, wasted in Detroit. And I think if he had a good coach like Belichick, a solid roster around him, I think he could do some damage in New England. I would love to see that too. He's a Brady type of player too. Like, I mean, nothing against Fields or Deshaun Watson even, but they're Cam Newton types of players. And obviously Cam Newton was not as good this year as he was his MVP year, obviously. 
but like I don't know if those types of players really fit Josh McDaniel's style but mm. like I said I'm pretty open as long as we have a better <laughs> season than last year yeah <laughs> Yeah, Matt Stafford deserves to have like a at least a winning season because the Lions are not known to win like at all, and uh, he's he's just a football guy. Like he, you know, he's a good quarterback who deserves to be on a good team. So Matt Stafford's he would be a good fit for New England, I think. So that I could definitely see him going there for sure. We'd like to once again thank you for tuning into the Warrior Rundown. I'm Mike. He's Alex. He's Matt, and we'll see you next time.